the front one is. It's just, it's a little. There you go. It's a little, it's a little humid today. Good morning and welcome to worship of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A triune God who gives us the gift of faith that is totally dependent on him and his mercy, especially when it comes to our salvation. It is through God and his work alone in Jesus Christ. And because we are totally dependent on him, then faith, our faith, can do and act in so many God-pleasing ways, according to his commands and precepts, out of thanks to him. 
Today we use the service setting one, the familiar setting on page 154 in the front part of your hymnal, otherwise printed in front of you. And we begin with our first hymn, 581, Lord, tis not that I did choose you. As you are comfortable and able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you. We bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God, the Father, have mercy on us. For you only are holy, you only are the Lord, you only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, keep your household, the church, in continual godliness and set us free from all adversities, that under your protection we may serve you with true devotion and holy deeds. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated. <clears throat> Faith does not depend on itself. It has total dependence on God and his mercy. Why should God have chosen a small coastal nation called Israel that was once 75 people going into the land of Egypt and now coming out 2 million? Was it anything that they had in themselves that was special? No. Israel was simply treated to God's grace. Nothing that Israel had could ever warrant God's goodness to them. It was simply because God acted in grace. And Moses reminds the people of this as they are about to enter the land of Canaan and take possession of the land. They are still under God's grace. So now, Israel, what is the Lord your God asking of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. 
to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes that I am commanding you today for your own good. Indeed, the heavens and the heaven of the heavens, the earth and everything that is on it, these belong to the Lord your God. Still, the Lord attached himself to your fathers, loved them, and he chose their descendants after them. That's you, from all peoples, as it is today. So cut away the tough shell of your sinful nature, and do not be stubborn any longer. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, the mighty one, and the awesome one, who does not show favoritism and does not take a bribe. He carries out justice for the fatherless and widows. He loves the alien who dwells among you and gives him food and clothing. So you are to love the alien because you were alien in the land of Egypt. Fear the Lord your God, serve him, cling to him, and take your oaths in his name. He is your glory. He is your God who performed for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. When your fathers went down to Egypt, the num they numbered 70 people. But now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of the sky. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 90, which we take from our 93 hymnal and has been printed for you. We sing the psalm together. We continue now in God's word with our second lesson where the Apostle John reminds us in his first letter, chapter 2, to not love the world or anything in the world greater than God, it is a struggle, but 
those who put their hope, who have their faith in God, will be rewarded because the things of God, the will of God, will last forever. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, boasting about material possessions, is not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. The word of the Lord. Congregation, please stand as we sing the gospel acclamation using the uh, appropriate uh, verse of God's love between the Alleluias. gospel appointed for this Sunday from the gospel of Luke chapter 18. How do we do this? How do we live for God? How are we saved? It is by God alone and Jesus reminds us with man it is impossible but with God all is possible. Rely on him for your strength and your salvation alone. A certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked him, why do you call me good? No one is good except one, God. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. I have kept all these since I was a child, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the ruler heard these words, he became very sad because he was very rich. When Jesus saw that the man became very sad, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, then who can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for people is possible for God. And Peter said, look, we have left our possessions and followed you. He said to them, amen, I tell you, anyone who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will most certainly receive many times more in this time and in the age to come, eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn, What is the World to Me? 717.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The lesson for consideration is our first lesson, part of Moses' farewell sermon from Deuteronomy chapter 10. Dear friends, how did you get to this point in your life? What or who is responsible for you being where you are today? Have you ever reflected on such questions from time to time? These questions are designed to make you pause and to make you realize that it wasn't just your own moxie and your own talents and your own good fortune that got you where you are the life you now enjoy. These questions are often asked of the actor or the athlete who now finally has made the big time, is making the big bucks, has the big contract, whatever the case may be. And these questions are a test of humility. Does this person believe that he is all that and a bag of chips? Or is he thankful for the time and effort and encouragement of others? Now, such questions have an eternal perspective as well. Oh, sure, it's easy, of, easy for us to sit here on a Sunday in the pews and say that, yes, God has blessed us, God has protected us each step of the way, each day of our lives. Beyond these walls, though, it can be a different story. We can easily lose sight and perspective and get swallowed up in our pride. So let us be encouraged then by the words of Moses to the nation of Israel and not lose the proper godly perspective that we have been graciously given. So you look at what Moses says. So now, Israel, what is the Lord your God asking of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes that I am commanding you today for your own good. Simple, direct, straightforward. Oh, people, here is what you are to do. So do. Love and serve God with all of your heart and soul. It's a tall order. So a logical response to what Moses is saying might be, well, what is my motivation? Why should I want to love and serve and obey God? Is God somehow needy? Is he missing something? Does he need followers to puff up his ego and sing his praises? From that perspective, I suppose that wouldn't be half bad. I could benefit from that. I'd give God what he wants. And he wouldn't have much control over me because if things got tough, I would just leave him in the dust. I'd walk away from him and he'd have great fear of that. That's utter foolishness, isn't it? Moses even says, indeed, the heavens and the heaven of heavens, the earth and everything that is on it, these belong to the Lord your God. If God wants a beautiful sunrise, it's his. If God wants to enjoy a pleasant ocean view, done. Everything is already his. Well then, perhaps my motivation for keeping God's commandments is so that I can win blessings from God. You know, get on his good side. 
from that perspective, if I do enough good, he will be satisfied with me. He will be pleased with me. Maybe if I do enough good, God will have, to ch have no choice but to bless me, have no choice but to treat me special, apart from others, because I decided to walk this path and obey his precepts. Moses says, the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, the mighty one, and the awesome one, who does not show favoritism and does not take a bribe. There's no special club. There are no levels of membership to attain. So wait a minute, you're telling me that my motivation is a whole lot of do's and don'ts? Well, I guess I can live with that. From that perspective, it seems like a rather boring life, a rather dull life, but oh well. I take care of my mom and dad. I haven't murdered anyone. I haven't had an affair. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't gossiped. I haven't coveted. Matter of fact, I guess I'm pretty good at following the letter of the law. And all these things, all these things, it adds up to eternal life, right? That's the big reward at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. Well... Yes, if, if you're perfect. Perfect, not just toward your neighbor, but toward your God. Perfect in thought and word and deed. Perfect in fearing, loving, and trusting God above all things. As the first commandment is defined, you shall have no other gods. The first commandment, which is embedded in all of the other commandments that follow. To stumble at just one point in this holy law is to be guilty of breaking it all. Well, you don't give me a leg to stand on. How can that be? I, I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. I've got to take credit. You're incorrect perceptive. Uh, perspectives and perceptions, whatever they may be, foolish or common sense to your own mind and heart, they get you nowhere. Your merits don't achieve anything. That's what God's law does. It cuts you down. In case you ever thought you could somehow earn God's favor by keeping his commands, it takes all of your futile efforts and throws them back at you and shows you the true result of all of your half-heartedness and shows you what your sins really do earn. They earn eternal death. Eternal death is the wage for even just a single sin. And we all have those ugly histories in our lifetimes of sins that we that we could want to forget, but can't. For Israel, this ugly history included incidents along the road traveling from Egypt to now the Promised Land. There was the golden calf at Mount Sinai at the base of the mountain. There was the time, multiple times, when they complained about not having water to drink in the desert. There were times when they even complained about God's providence and the food, the manna that he provided generously for them day in and day out in the desert. And there were times that they did not trust his protection as they had to do battle with their enemies. Your ugly history might include fights with sibling or spouse, losing your temper, thinking ill of others, holding a grudge or telling a lie here and a lie there. And granted, these sins in your own mind might seem small compared to the sins of a nation like Israel, but they are just as grievous, they are just as deserving, they are just as damning as any other sin that God sees. 
because it's not about your perspective and what you make of things or what I make of things. It's about God's perspective and how things truly are. So how could Moses then hope to spur the people on to loving the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their soul? Clearly they couldn't do it on their own. They couldn't depend on themselves to do anything. With people it is impossible. Sin makes it impossible to please God. However, they could depend on God and his abundant mercy. When they sinned at Sinai, God chose mercy. When they sinned in the desert, God chose mercy. When they sinned anywhere from Egypt to Canaan, God chose mercy. Still the Lord attached himself to your fathers, loved them, and he chose their descendants after them. That's you from all peoples as it is today, Moses says. It was nothing special or unique that attracted God, the God of the world, the God of the universe, to this tiny coastal nation of Israel of about two million people. God simply acted with compassion. God simply acted with grace, freely giving them the opposite, the very opposite of what they truly deserved. And so it is the same with you. Your own sin makes it possible, or makes it impossible, rather. But look at what what God has made possible. Though God didn't need you, he called you to be his own. Though God should condemn you, he forgives you. He defends you. Though he should be distant from you, He delights to be your God, which is the very opposite of what you truly deserve. What grace. What grace. Grace that shows us Jesus Christ. Grace that is undeservedly given time and time over. Grace that relieves you from the torment of of your sins and their guilt because it points to Jesus who lived the perfect life that you failed to live. It relieves you from your ugly history of sin because it points to Jesus who sacrificed himself perfectly for that sin on the cross. Grace which gives you uh, respite and refuge every time the devil hounds you because it points to Jesus, who, as scripture says, destroys the work of the devil. It even takes the sting out of death, because it points to Jesus' victory over the grave. What grace, amazing grace is that. And this grace changes your perspective changes your perspective about your relationship with God and even how you view his commandments and precepts. No longer are they burdensome. No longer are you trying to bargain with them to God or win God's favor through them. No, you are motivated now by the right reason because God has intervened and made things possible by his mercy You now are enriched and enabled by faith in him to love and do and act the way that God commands in the light of his mercy and in the light of his grace. In fact, when you think about it, you know, every time, every time that Israel would hear the name of the Lord, the name that we see in all capital letters, Every time they would hear that name spoken to them or read to them from scripture, that would would trigger something in their minds and in their hearts. It It would trigger 
the fact that God was gracious and merciful to them in so many ways, for that is his name, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Every time they would hear that name, they would be moved to action, moved to love because they had first been loved by him. And so it is with you. Now when you see that name, you can think of God's compassion and grace. And now when you see the name of Jesus, like you always have and like you have always known, that moves you to godly action. That moves you to love as you have first been loved by God through the Savior. What grace. What grace. True godly perspective. And true godly motivation come only, only from a God who is as wondrous and as awesome and as glorious and as mighty as ours. By grace, you know him. By grace, you love him. By grace, you cling to him. And he knows you through and through. He knows that you want to cut away the tough shell of your sinful nature and that you do not want to be stubborn any longer. He knows that you can still be stiff-necked. He knows that you still sin. He knows the sinful nature within you will not give up without a fight. That's why he chooses not to forsake you. That's why you still cling to him. And that's why you are dependent on him and dependent on him alone so that your sinful nature might be drowned by daily contrition, daily repentance over your sin, and that all its evil deeds and desires be nailed to Jesus' cross again and again, so that you might have forgiveness and be assured of that forgiveness in his grace, and so that sinful nature can daily die at the cross of Jesus. And then day by day, a new self, a new person, living by faith, should live in God's presence, live in righteousness and purity in his presence forever. Faith that depends on God loves God and loves to be an imitator of God, as scripture says, as his dearly loved child and walk in the love as Christ has loved and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Now your faith looks for opportunities. Now your faith is ready to go and do. And just think of all the opportunities that lay before you. Think of all the people, all the people that the Lord has placed in your life. Think of your children, whom you have brought to the baptismal font, and you are who you are raising in the way of righteousness, so that they may hold on to that joy, hold on to that Savior, Christ Jesus, in all things. And as you are patiently being a parent to them, you are reflecting the grace and goodness of a Heavenly Father who loves them. Think of how you promised on oath before God at his altar that you would love your spouse, that you would cling to him or cling to her always and love them unconditionally and love them with the utmost of care, displaying the same love that Christ has for his church by putting their needs ahead of your own as long as you both shall live. Think of all the people that God places in your life, all of the family members, all of the in-laws, all of the friends, and yes, even all of the strangers. All of them are opportunities to serve with a joy-filled heart, which gives glory and praise to God always. How mighty, how awesome, how wonderful is the Lord who freely attaches himself to you by his grace. He is the one who has brought you this far. 
And he is the one who will lead you home. He is the one that gives you godly perspective to follow his ways in the light of his immeasurable love and mercy. He is your glory, and he is your God forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding and gives us the ability to do his will, may it guard your faith forever, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith today with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray. We praise you, O Lord. We exalt your most holy name. In the midst of trouble, we praise you for your goodness. Though our lot on earth may not always be easy and pleasant, your mercies have been our strength and stay. To know that you have chosen us to be your own is all we need to know to make life worth living. We confess that we are not worthy of all your blessings. We have exalted ourselves when we should have been humble. We have thought highly of ourselves while despising others. We have not always served you nor walked in your ways. We have not loved you with all our hearts, souls, and minds. We have weakened in the good fight of faith. We have been discouraged, forgetting that your power is ours for the asking. We have overlooked many opportunities to spread your gospel. We have been proud of our goodness when we should have been proclaiming your justice and mercy. For these are many sins, we beg your forgiveness. May your Holy Spirit strengthen our faith. Give us a spirit of true humility to recognize the merits of others. Help us to be concerned about the spiritual and physical well-being of all who dwell on the face of this earth. Bless the witness of our words and lives on the hearts of those who do not know you. And when we have finished the race, grant us the crown of righteousness earned by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. It is at this time I remind you to fill out the friendship registers in your pews. And also at this time I ask that the offering be brought forward as the congregation sings the appointed hymn verses.
now continue in our service and prepare to receive the Lord's Supper and the pledge of his forgiveness. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your son's body and blood. Send us your spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. Always. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace, Amen. 
You may be seated as we first commune those who wish to remain in their pews this morning. <coughs> Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, this gift which he has given especially for you, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until everlasting life. Depart in peace and be assured your sins are forgiven. Amen.
supper has ended, we stand and we give our thanks with the thanksgiving responses. Give thanks to the, to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated as we sing our final hymn. Share. 
church of God, elect and holy, be the people he intends, strong in faith and swift to answer each command your master sends. Good morning. Welcome one and all to the Lord's house on this very warm, very, very warm weekend as the colors seem to be peaking here in Bay City or at least on the church property. What, what lovely, a lovely setting we have to praise our God today. By way of announcement, uh, if you just turn the page, you'll see that uh, it is business as usual. The food drive, Zoom Bible study, adult Bible study following our worship here this morning. And then also uh, new to the bulletin on the last page on the back, uh, you have the Advent by Candlelight. Ladies, you are encouraged to mark your calendars. And the Reformation hymn sing uh, for the area, uh, Wells Churches, November 2nd, 6.30 p.m., a song of word and service. So please uh, make plans to attend, hosted by our sister congregation of St. John's. Uh, also want to just make you aware, it was kind of nice to have a break in between events, but our next one is uh, going to get going here uh, within the next week as far as signups are concerned with the living Christmas card and all that we need and all the volunteers and so forth uh, that we need to organize it here as well as the uh, participants of other area uh, congregations as well. That gets going this week and hopefully all of that will be ready by the first Sunday of November, uh, giving everybody three weeks to prepare, about three weeks to prepare for the event in December. Uh, so our Lord will bless that, I'm sure. As you go from here, you go under the grace of God that has brought you to this point and will continue to lead you home. It is not by your power that you are the Lord's. It is not by your contribution that you are the Lord's. It is simply an act of his mercy and grace. Rejoice, for he is your God, and he delights to be your God and give you blessing upon eternal blessing. Thank you. <laughs> 